last time on Oz Hour. Okay, last time on Oz Hour, everything is panicked. The girl's alive, and she knocks over the fucking potion of life, or life potion. I can't remember the name of it all of a sudden. Whatever that shit is. And it gets thrown around, and it wakes up the phonogram, I think is what it's called. And then the petrification thing, or whatever it is, falls on... What's her name? Margot... <laughs> Margot Tobble. Margot Tobble. <laughs> I don't... I can't remember. Toppy? Um, and then Unk Nunky, um, they get turned to stone and everyone panics and the patchwork girl is alive and making rhymes and being da da da. And then the wizard's like, oh my fucking God, my beautiful wife and the potion of life. It's all done. My life's work or six years life of work. And so he decides that he's going to stay there and make the potion of life. Uh, and then that patchwork girl, uh, glass cat and ojo are gonna go find other ingredients to make it quicker and that's what they go do they leave the house they find ever-ending bread and cheese they go into a forest Uh, there's other things that happen but i just really i can't even remember but they go into the forest and then they run into a house that has this really scary voice that tells them you can come in but you have to go straight to bed and can't speak and patchwork girl is like uh well i'm not doing that i'm gonna make rhymes and be silly and ask questions so she gets thrown out and everyone goes to bed and that's it hi there and welcome to episode 36 of oz hour the only place where you can hear everything you never knew about the wonderful and strange land of oz that's right with the help of some alcohol we will be discussing each of the 14 books in l frank Baum's wizard of oz series today we will be continuing with book seven the patchwork girl of oz covering chapters seven through nine we're your hosts blake stone why it's volume and joining us as always is our resident oz initiate hannah agiri uh, <laughs> oh, oh. oh no i wanted to do what? something like wrestling because you did that and then i was like oh, oh i don't know anything wrestling uh, oh so you did oh. like a like ah. uh, yeah it <laughs> okay. read like you didn't know anything about wrestling no, yeah, no, so that no. that's helpful <laughs> oh, that was good. thank you so you just played last time on where you did much better than whatever that was. <laughs> um, you covered what happened last time on the Patchwork Girl of Oz. Why? How long did that take? One minute and 31 seconds. So the only feedback that I have is the Patchwork Girl slaps the powder of life. Not the potion of life. Across yeah, the what the fuck? Why was I? I knew potion wasn't right. <laughs> um, and the thing that's brought to life is called a phono. Graph. What did I say? I don't even photograph. I don't know. What I you think said. you said gramophone. Also, <laughs> you, said, you said about three things. <laughs> um, okay, and I, I love that we're just doing names right now. <laughs> Margot Lot. Margot. Not Margot Tobby. There's no I mean, B. It's not even a heart. Like it's a just a name. Margot Lot. Mark okay, I've lot. never heard that name before. Well, I've never heard it, but it sounds like a name. Oh. Right? I know. Well, but I really confused myself ever since I said Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie, Margot Tobby, Margot Tony. Like, it's, yeah. it it's just all I know. <laughs> um, okay, but say it back. Margot Lot. That's my girl. Someone's not going to remember that next time. <laughs> Margot Lot, Margot Lot, Margot Lot, Margot Lot. Um, so, yeah. So, Margot Lot and Unk Nunky are turned to stone by the liquid of petrifaction, petrification, petrifaha. Um, also, he's the crooked magician. He's not the wizard. <sighs> I, I, I did not realize that all of my notes were about names. Yeah, yeah. you know, that's my that's not my strong suit. <laughs> well, you know, one more name. Well, the patchwork girl's name is Scraps. Scraps. Oh, that's not what I was going to oh, say. Oh, that's the last thing I have written down. Oh, so. another Just name. <laughs> one more name I would mention is Nick Chopper, who is the Tin Woodman. And you skipped to the part where oh, they yeah. met that random munchkin who I knew I was knew forgetting something. Yeah. I just when was like. You did say that you were missing something. <laughs> yeah. But then you skipped to the end. But you got it right. Yeah. And the ending was pretty good. Succinct. You know exactly where we left off. Two people are sleeping and Scraps is wandering around outside. Yeah. It's always great fun to listen to you do that, though. It's a lot of work. Yeah. And you, you do it. Yeah. You show yeah. up. You. Beat and that it, face and show up anyway. That's Takes what I gotta do. Two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Before we started recording, Wyatt went ahead and whipped up some cocktails. What's this delicious looking thing? So tonight, we are drinking Hair of the Woozy, the recipe for which you can find on our Instagram at Oz Hour Podcast. So let us the slur. Whoa. Just for the record, I did not mean to say slut. 
Chapter 7. The Troublesome Phonograph or Gramophone. <laughs> gramophone. <laughs> <laughs> so Ojo wakes up in the morning and he looks around at the house that he just woke up in. The haunted cabin. You know. That's now what I call it. <laughs> now that cabin. it's not super dark, the sun has risen, he can actually see what's around him. So since Munchkin houses are domed, there's only one room. So it's just one big room. They could have split it into four, but yeah, they could have put walls like, inside. <laughs> but they it is put walls in a dome. It's one yeah. room. But, you know, <laughs> Uncle Nunky's house is also a dome. It was the fire in the middle. Ojo like slept on the in a corner. In corner. Yeah. So like, I was like, okay, cool. All the Munchkin houses are one room. Whether they pee and poop outside, oh, right oh. in the center of them. Yeah, they probably have outhouses outside. Here. Yeah, outhouses. Yeah, at the best, or they just go. You know, the outhouses. Somebody wants. <laughs> So Ojo sees that there are three beds, the one he's in, the one Bungle is asleep in, and then a third one that's neatly made up, which I assume the patchwork girl was supposed to sleep in, but then she got shoved out the door. She got booted. Yeah. She got yeeted. Whoa, we're going to edit that out. We're going to bleep that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, we're I not thought doing maybe that. the kids yeah. would like that. No, the kids don't. <laughs> Um, so in the center of the room is a table and on it is this piping hot breakfast spread. Breakfast with one chair, breakfast service for one. And there's no one in sight. There's no old lady standing there who just made it. Uh, there's nothing to see. It's like just a, breakfast. Just continental yeah. breakfast. Yeah, yeah. But it's like pre-selected. It's all on one plate. It, yeah. Oh, well, okay, but I think the table is loaded with food. With like and plates. Ojo gets to make his Oh, plate. okay. Yes, oh. then continental breakfast, 100%. Okay. All chafing dishes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All chafing but, dishes. Yeah, Ojo and Bungle appear to be alone in the room, and Ojo gets up. He walks to the toilet stand and washes his face and hair. He says, I am not going to investigate further until these pores look good, and this hair is quaffed. Okay. I mean, he's probably like, okay, the people who are here are really fastidious. They like wanted us to be quiet, go right to bed, wake up, there's breakfast. Like, I'm going to look good. They have expectations. Yeah, so he goes dressed to dinner. Uh, well, he's except ready. for his hat. He leaves his hat off. He ready. <laughs> um, but yeah, he goes over to the table and says out loud, I wonder if this is my breakfast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like, uh, should I eat this? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and this voice that se- like, he hears a voice right next to him and it says, eat it. Mm. But he looks and no one's there. He like looks around. There's still no one in the room, but he's fucking hungry. Is it supposed to sound menacing? I don't uh, know. Why it did it like that? It's probably just like a guy, right? Or a girl. I guess if it's coming right behind you, though, it's just automatically going to sound menacing because you don't. Yeah, see it's coming from nowhere. I would say it was probably more like eat it. Like I feel like it's more just like more like monotone. Yeah, like just I yeah, don't just know. like like the qualifi- regular regular voice volume probably. Yeah, and, but like right here. Yeah, yeah, it's so like right next. That's to creepy him. in it's and just, of itself. Yeah. It is creepy. Imagine like an invisible person crouching down next to your ear and saying, "Eat it." Yeah, especially yeah. in a room where you can see everything. Yeah, yeah, it's one room exactly. And you're like maybe. I don't know what's That's creepier, true. having walls or and not having walls. You know what? <laughs> and it says it says the voice seems close, but it doesn't say that like the voice like feels close. You know, yeah. like does he feel breath? Does he feel a body? Like you know, uh, like the, the warmth heat. of the body, yeah. uh, uh, radiating, baking off. I was like, <laughs> what is this? Well, y- let's see. We'll see. Okay. So Ojo sits down. He eats to his heart's desire. Without talking to the voice at all, the voice doesn't talk to him. Yeah, he just eats his breakfast. He eats. He eats a lot. He eats like spirited away. Okay, and for uh, him. after yeah. he's no, he left his home because he was hungry. hungry. Yeah, yeah. He's stuffed. Good for he him. He goes and wakes up Bungle and is like, "Hey, Bungle, get up. Time to go." Yeah, and he's like, "Hey, thank you to whoever may live here. Like, I'm leaving now. Like, he, he does a little thank you to be polite." And then he leaves. There's no reply. The there's, voice doesn't there's, say there's, anything. Yeah, nothing said back to him. Mm. And so they just like leave the cabin. Yeah, Ojo grabs his basket and off they go. Yep. And when they go outside, Scraps is sitting in the middle of the path mm. and she's playing with some pebbles. Yeah. She's just she's just scrawling around in the dirt. And she's like, <laughs> how do you do, Mr. Pebble? I'm doing quite fine, Mrs. Pebble. How are you? Just kidding. It's probably like marbles or something. <laughs> them. She's probably playing marbles. Um, 
But the Patchwork Girl looks up, Scraps, and sees them. And she's like, there you are. The sun's been up for hours. I thought you were never going to come back. And it's like, She's okay. been awake for one day. Like, How does she know when people get up? What's hours to yeah, her? Yeah, that's true. She hasn't even seen a morning before. Oh, yeah. that's true. Uh, that her disturbing? first sunrise. But, you know, and so they're like, what were you even she doing last so night? And she doesn't ingenuity. sleep. That's right. Yeah. Because, yeah, so they're like, what were you even doing last night? And she's like, I just watched the stars. I've never seen those before. Oh. So, like, similar, yeah, her first sunrise. Like, her first, like, night with the stars. Okay. like And the moon. Yeah. And... Not just the stars and the moon. There was one other strange thing she saw that night, which was that huge gray wolf. <gasps> Ocho says, whoa, 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 wolf? <laughs> no. Well, which he should be happy he was inside. In <laughs> yeah, well, seriously. Well, so you might think, <laughs> yeah, thankfully he was inside. Well, the gray wolf, um, he went up to the door three times last night, yep, that's is what, what the scraps, patchwork girl says. Yeah, Scraps tells reason. Ocho this. Ojo is like, well, okay. The door of the house? Yeah. The the wolf went to the door three times during the night. The wolf was circling the house and approached the door no. three times during the night. And what does that mean? Like, is that something we should have researched? I don't know, but it sounds like it, something so cool. Like, it sounds like some cool, like, weird like curse. Messenger or, like, messenger or yeah. something? Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, there was a wolf that circled the house three times. If I was reading a book by or a different author. Or is the wolf author, the voice? Whoop. Oh. Well, when, oh. Well, if it was in the night, because he did talk in the morning, too. But maybe, I don't Scraps know. would have seen. Okay, that's an interesting perspective. That's wild. And also, obviously, that the is... wolf has something to do with what's going on. Yeah. But things we're going to say in a minute will make you think something completely different. Yeah, you might, you might Cause it be goes very proud of what you've come up with. Ooh. So, um, Ojo says, in response to, well, that wolf who came to the house three times last night. Ojo says... He's not sure why a wolf would come to the door three times because the beds were comfortable and he had a big delicious breakfast. So you might uh, be thinking that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, I'm just like, why did you say that? Yeah, yeah, okay. So in response to this, Scraps is like, well, aren't you still tired and hungry? Which also, why are you asking him all of that? But is he still tired and hungry? He As a matter is. of fact, yeah. Oh. And he starts to eat cheese. What's He's, real? Well, so, yeah. Okay. What's so real? Because a wolf circled the the voice house yeah. three times in the night, and Ojo slept and ate there, therefore he's tired and he's hungry. No, it was ghost meal. Oh, precisely. It was ghost meal. I think, I don't know, I don't understand, I won't pretend to have researched or done any understanding on this, <laughs> but my impression is that this is some kind of a strange, obscure ghost story reference. Like, he's, like, it's kind of giving me, like, a Japanese ghost story from, like, the 1880s or something, or, yeah. like, a basis for an anime or something, but, like, it just feels like... He ate ghost meal. He slept in ghost bed, so he didn't get anything good. Yeah. I don't was. know what the wolf is, though. I don't know the wolf. Whoa. But Ojo's like, yeah, I'm still tired. I'm still hungry. I'm actually going to eat some of my unlimited snack supply right now. So Scraps dances down the path and sings, Kizzle Kazzle Core, the wolf is at the door. There's nothing to eat but a bone without meat and a bill from the grocery store. You know, Scraps does that little poem, and Ojo is like, oh, what does that mean? Um, Scraps says, don't ask me. It just came into my head. Because she doesn't <laughs> even know what a grocery store or a bone without meat even are. So she know. is literally just saying words that come into her head. Yeah, she's Probably like, I just Probably because of this. all that posy she has. It's crazy. And the yeah, cat... Things are coming out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The cat also thinks it's crazy, and... The cat is like, she is stark, staring, raving, crazy. She has no <laughs> brains. She's fucking insane. I love this cat. Honestly. All the while, Scraps What's your is name again? Uh, Bungle. Bungle. I remember that for some reason. <laughs> 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 I don't all, understand. All the while, Scraps is just like admiring her patches in the sun. She's just like dancing and like looking at herself. And <laughs> Ojo is basically like, yeah, she's fucking crazy. They're all just like, she's <laughs> yeah, insane. Like, she's insane. Suddenly... 
They oh hear footsteps behind them, and they turn around to see who's following them. A lot of scary shit is happening now. Oh my god, I'm like, scared. Just generally. This is a, an intense chapter so far. Generally. Is it more wolves? <gasps> generally. You're right. The general's here? Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> it's the phonograph running up oh behind them god. going, hold on, wait for me. Yeah. Why is he... Oh god, why is he even alive still? Someone should have put him down. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so... He says... I've run away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. Yeah. Ojo was like, oh, it's the music machine. And the cat's like, yeah, fucking great. And the music, or the phonograph explains that he and the magician got into this terrible fight because, like, he plays way too much music and the magician wanted him to stop. And so he was like, he was being basically abused and he snuck out in the middle of the night while the magician was stirring all of his kettles yeah. and he ran all night to catch up with He's them. He's been chasing them all night. So like they started <laughs> in the early evening. They stayed the night at a place. They woke up the next morning oh late God. and started walking and the phonograph is just now catching up with them. That is so scary. Yeah. And it was I, it's like it's like it follows. Yeah, and it will it's keep like those little robo dogs from Black Mirror. <laughs> yeah. oh. But Ojo, like everybody thinks this, but in this moment we're hearing, like Ojo doesn't fucking want him to join. He's like, I don't actually want him to come with me, and so he says, "Hey, we're on really important business right now, and we really can't be bothered. So you have to go." anywhere else you have to go somewhere there's else, a though. lot of discrimination against people that play music okay yeah yeah hashtag musicer i must say musicer. there seems to be a little bit of a trend here hashtag justice for musicer oh <laughs> yeah but honestly. oh my god and it's gonna even the i agree with arms mm-hmm. of the angel fly away for just six ninety nine a month, you could foster a musicer. Send us your water. Send us your funds. Send us your love. And most of all, send us your money. Every year, ten to twenty musicers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, we're making that just so you guys know. <laughs> we actually next project. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, so the phonograph is just straight up like that's not polite. You're not being nice to me actually right now. And Ojo's like, yeah, well it's true. Yeah, so <laughs> fucking suck. Maybe I'm sorry. I'm else. not sorry. Oh. And the phonograph is like, you know, this is actually this is really unkind treatment. <laughs> And <laughs> it was like actually I came here to get away from that and now yeah. all of a sudden like, it's actually, back in my face. What I'm realizing is you guys are like just as toxic as he was and I don't know why yeah. you're so blind. And I, I thought this was saying a mental breakdown. Uh, but, yeah. Um he's actually super depressed because he's like I was made to amuse people and everyone hates me. Like you oh, all yeah. just hate me. Yeah. It's fucking tragic. I feel so bad. <laughs> I, I feel terrible. It actually breaks uh, my heart. But and the cat is like, well, it's not that you, we hate you. We just hate the sounds that you make because they're terrible. And um, your motor is so loud and your wheel squeaks and you fucking suck as a machine. <laughs> like if you well, didn't play the music him or like, something or yeah. get your own records. I, or, think I don't know. I think it's jokes about how the phonograph is outdated now and oh, they and have just, like yeah. better record playing materials. Yeah. Now. So it's going to squeak and scratch. Yeah, and the music exactly. is not going to sound good. Like, oh, we have a much clearer tone now in 1913 or I whatever see. this is. <laughs> Well, even if they meant that thing, they probably would fucking hate it too because it played music. Yeah, like, everyone yeah. hates Let's music just, like, in not Oz. Bring yeah. that alive. This everyone is giving hates music. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, <laughs> okay. the only music you're allowed to listen to in Oz is like a 600 piece orchestra yeah. and in the same room that you're in, and it's only if they're tin. And yeah. then also they have to be playing the Tin Man Salute Armageddon. You know what? Oh, it sounds. Uh... Welcome to Oz. Here are your complimentary <laughs> earplugs. Um... But anyway, yeah, Ojo just tells the thing, like, you need to go away. And the phonograph's like, it, it's not my fault. I sound like that. It's my records. And 
Scraps finally jumps into the conversation and she's like, hold on, like, I'm interested in this thing, you know? Uh, when I was born, the first thing I heard was this thing's music. I want to hear some more music. Okay. Yeah, makes okay. sense. And she's polite and she says, well, what's your name? And we learn his name, which is Victor Columbia Edison, which it's Vic for short. But for long, you might be thinking, what a strange name. What I would say is my theory is Victrola Columbia Records. Edison made the Vict or the fucking whatever he is, the phonograph. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Victrola Columbia <laughs> Records. <laughs> Thomas Edison made the phonograph. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Hey, it's Vic for short. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Vic. <laughs> um, but he's Vic. Yeah. Hi, Vic. <laughs> Vic says he has a record in right now that is a highly classical composition. Mm. And Scraps is like, okay. What is that? We'll see about that. Yeah. Vic Scraps explain. is like, I've never heard anything. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't do yeah, anything like, for me. I guess me. it will um, be for me. <laughs> Vic is like, you know, it's supposed to be the best, most puzzling piece of classical music you've ever heard. And you're supposed to like it, even if you don't. Hmm. He's like, Sounds like the Beatles. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I yeah. love the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Wow. <well. laughs> It's problematic both um, ways. <laughs> but he's like, Scraps, do you understand? And Scraps is like, not in the least. No. But um, he plays it anyway. He plays it anyway. And the cat is shrieking and hissing. Ojo is covering his ears. And the oh. patchwork girl is just laughing. She's just open mouth, gape jaw laughing oh right gosh. in the face of everybody. But then everybody. Vic <laughs> won't like stop playing. And so uh -oh. Scraps is like, okay, Vic, enough. Stop. Oh. He keeps playing. She's even tired of She's it. She's like, Vic, all right, stop. Uh-oh. So something happens that I can't really explain. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Vic dies. Well. <laughs> and then Vic dies. Yeah. <laughs> of a heart attack. <laughs> That's what they call it. <laughs> yeah. But no. It, so when you think the powder of life, you probably think, oh, it turns you to life. I and mean, that's it, right? Like, nothing else special. No one gets magical powers, like, because of it. And frankly, they're all, like, even more vulnerable to the things they're normally vulnerable to. But what happens is that Ojo jumps up and he takes a little crank off because there's, like, a little crank that, like, runs the fucking phonograph. And he throws it. And it hits the road, bounces, bounces back. And pops back in to the phonograph and just keeps winding. All the while going, yippee! Okay, it doesn't say yippee. <laughs> it does not. It does I wouldn't give, believe that. It does not give a wholehearted yippee. <laughs> Maybe like a half ass. No, no, none of that. But I don't understand why this piece of metal bounces down and then bounces back up into it like time got reversed. Okay, neither does Scraps. And she says, let's run away! Yeah, <laughs> yeah she's, she's, let's run. I don't run. know what that is. I don't know what that is. Yeah, yeah. they just it's take off running. Oh the my phonograph God. is following them. No! It's galloping. It has it four is, legs. It follows. Yeah, it is, it follows. Ugh. But um, they take off running and it's chasing them like... What's the matter? Don't you love classical like, music? God, no. Yeah. Uh, and Scraps stops running. She turns around and she says, no, <laughs> no. We hate it, Vic. Don't. We Vic. hate it. You're making my cotton shrink. <laughs> we. She says, we will passicle on the classical. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, and, whoa, whoa. Yeah, no, she ate that. She <laughs> but ate then, that moment. <gasps> that was her moment. <laughs> Vic is like, just flip my record. Just flip the record. It's a ragtime tune. Yeah. And but she's you like, should be able to flip your own damn record. Seriously. He should be able to flip his own yeah. damn record. Ugh. Well, I'm going to have okay, to flip actually, it for you. But they, they're like, well, what the fuck, fuck is ragtime? And he's like, it's the opposite of classical. The exact but, opposite but they, of classical. They Sorry. all Heavy metal. hate it, too. They hate it. And they're like, it's one extreme or the other. It's all extreme. It's too bad. Like, he won't shut it off. Scrap stuffs her apron in the horn. Oh, my god. And gosh. Ojo's like, hey, like... The wizard threatened, or the magician threatened to, like, smash you. 
I'm going to fucking smash you oh and my all God. your records if, if you don't you stop. If you don't stop, your records are toast. The music stops <laughs> immediately. <laughs> and um, he's like, you don't like ragtime? <laughs> yeah, Why do they just shocked. have to... Uh, I guess that's their only purpose in life, really, is to do that. It's all he knows how to do. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> like, Scraps kind of tries to explain that to him. And she's like, look, you're not just you. You're also the music. And, like, you need to figure that out on your own, that you're not the concert. You're the nuisance. Okay? Ooh. And yeah, he says, but <laughs> but music hath charms to soothe the savage beast. Uh, timing is everything. <laughs> yeah. Scra- <laughs> yeah. Okay, mister. And, <laughs> and Scra- I think you need to learn about timing. <laughs> Seriously. And Scraps is like, yeah, well, we're not savage beasts. Um, <laughs> and you need to go ask the magician to just take you back because you're done here. You're done. You you're need to done. go back home <laughs> because you're not supposed to be here anymore. Vic is like, I ain't going back there, man. They'll smash me there. Oh my god. <laughs> and Ojo again gets violent. I think he needs a little solo trip. Yeah, just yeah. go on a journey, man. Yeah. You need to go yeah. on a little solo oh. vacation, take some time, you know, reel the world in, see what make, you're... M- make better friends. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, seriously. These um, are not his friends. But Ojo is like, you're not safe here either. We will smash you too. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we will kill you. So the phonograph uh. just goes on his yeah. way like toward the munchkin village it's unclear whether he's going back up the mountain to the he's magician's not safe house or there not. either he's i don't go. think he is i think he's just going off like it's like homeward bound except he's not homeward bound you know what I mean? yeah <laughs> yeah if he's he's elsewhere bound he's elsewhere bound. and they <laughs> all are like okay well we're not gonna go fucking that way good thing he's not going the same way we're going and they start walking down the big path toward wherever's next okay and that's the end of chapter seven, the troublesome phonograph. And Blake, what would you call that? A phono faux pas. <laughs> chapter eight, the foolish owl and the wise donkey. I hate this chapter. This is a chapter that's an example is in that could have been taken out to make things like the haunted cabin make more sense. Yeah. For instance, mm. this whole chapter. So. They walk along for about half an hour before they come to a home by the side of the road. And it's like it's a pretty nice house. It's nicer than well, the other houses that yeah. they've seen so far, but they're out of and the does woods. They still now. have the dome if they're still in Munchkin uh, Land. They are still in Munchkin okay. Land, yeah. yeah oh, they, yes, yes, yes. So yes, yes. I assume it's domed, but because they're still in Munchkin Land, but it doesn't specify. Yeah, but it's one but of the nicer ones. It's out it's of the nicer. woods, it's off the road. Yeah. And above the door, there's a sign that says Miss Foolish Owl and Mr. Wise Donkey, Public Advisors. So Scraps is like, Let's go get some advice. Yeah, why not? <laughs> like, it's just, they, they might as well, and they need some directions anyway, so they might as well go in. They go to the door, and Ojo knocks, <laughs> and a deep voice is just like, come in. Everyone's just answering from inside the house. No one's opening the door for their guests. So they enter this house, and the first thing they see is a light brown donkey. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Just a donkey. But not just any donkey. Donkeyville? No. Oh, Oh, Donkeyton. Or Donkeyton. Yeah. Well, that's a good question, actually. And something that I have kind of written in my notes. But uh, the first thing they notice is that he is wearing a blue apron and a blue little cap. So just like a little hat. Uh, And he's dusting all the furniture. He's just doing the cleaning for the day. Hmm. Or for the night. No. Yes, he do the cooking. Yes, he do the cleaning. (laughs) Yes, he keep the Nana real ripe for your eating. So up on a shelf above the donkey, (laughs) who's dusting, is this big blue owl wearing a blue sunbonnet. And she's sitting up on the shelf and she's blinking these big owl eyes at them. And the donkey's like, good morning. Come for some advice. And Scraps is like, well, we came here because we're just on our way through. (laughs) But like, yeah, we'll do advice. Win in Rome. Might as well. Yeah, why not? And he's like, as long as it's free, because we don't have any fucking money, and like we just want it for free. And it says public. And he's like, you are the queerest group of travelers that I have ever seen. Oh. So I'm going to advise you to get advice from the owl, because the owl is strange and foolish, yeah. and I'm, that will be better for I you. I would already be insulted, but I'd be like, all right. Yeah. 
Like, He's like, I won't you? serve you. Just kidding. Interesting. Um, well, you're just a fucking donkey, bitch. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. All right. I'm sorry I made the joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really um, opened a couple doors here yeah. with the audience. <laughs> it did something to me. So the owl stares down at them, and she flaps her big wings, and she shouts, Hootie toot, tee toot. No. Fiddle come foo. <laughs> How do you do? Riddle come, tittle come. Too ra la woo. No. Yeah. I don't like the way you moved your body during that. Yeah, it was very bird. I was getting I was getting into the groove of the and swing you, of things. You really sounded like an owl too. Yeah. Hoot hoot. No. Um, Fiddle come foo. So <laughs> Fiddle come foo. So Ojo is like, wow, that was better than one of your poem scraps. Oh. <laughs> but um, red. Um, but Bungle's like, that was complete nonsense. <laughs> Yeah, she made up words. The donkey is just like, you should take her advice. Don't. Don't. What is the advice? (laughs) Don't do what you're doing. (laughs) And they're like, okay. So then the owl says, Patrick girl, let's come to life. No one's sweetheart, no one's wife. Lacking sense and loving fun. She'll be snobbed by everyone. The donkey's Ew, like, uh, the your donkey's arms were mechanical. You guys don't understand. <laughs> uh, you can't see it, but like he's yeah. giving a mechanical owl. The donkey is like, yeah. hey, you know what? Good for you. That was a compliment from her. That was a really nice thing for her to say. What? The donkey... Did she even say I wasn't? <laughs> 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 All I heard was, oh, 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 oh. The listeners oh, know. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the donkey tells scraps that she would make a splendid pin cushion and that oh my God. yeah <laughs> and that if she belonged to him he would wear smoked glasses when he looked at her oh so like blacked out glasses so like he wouldn't have to look at her oh is that, oh, that mean he's implying so that she's mean. ugly and she's like, why would you say that? He's ugly. <laughs> and he's like, well, you're just so gaudy and gay. Like, I don't want to see that every day. And she's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I am beautiful. Yeah, she's like, I'm beautiful and it hurts your eyes. Like, yeah. that's what you're telling and me. And she's like, I'm way more beautiful than you munchkin people strutting around in nothing but blue all the time. Ooh. And but the munch or the donkey is like, well, I'm not a munchkin. Yeah, I just I'm live here. here. I just live Yeah, here. you're right. But <laughs> do you know how he got to... Munchkin land um, by uh, balloon. No, he walked there, but yeah. it's because <laughs> <laughs> I'm picturing a donkey in a balloon. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's meant to walk. That's his whole thing. But he was he's from the land of Mo and he was just visiting Oz on Mo. the day that Ozma cut it off from the rest of the world. He was just visiting. He walked in to visit his cousin Nan. Oh my god! And he's a refugee. Off. Yeah, it's, yes, he's a refugee. <laughs> yes. there's a refugee crisis yeah. in Oz. Yes. No, no one's talking to about it. There was a bunch of people that were there just for the day, yeah. and now we're there for life. Oh God! <sighs> and suddenly the owl goes. Oh, <laughs> just searching for a charm, cause unk monkeys come to harm. Charms are scarce; they're hard to get. Oh, Joe's got a job, you bet. <laughs> I want to get. If are you gonna do that again? Cause I want to get a video. Of that. <laughs> cause y'all don't understand. It actually is so insane. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ojo asks <laughs> Ojo asks the donkey if the owl is really so foolish. And the donkey's like, oh yeah, that's why she's so vulgar. I actually really admire the owl because you know owls are supposed to be wise, but this one's so dumb. Like, isn't that fun? Who's saying this the donkey? The yeah. donkey saying the owl this. flaps its wings again and it says it's hot. Do you want me to back up? <laughs> no, go. The owl flaps its wings again, and it says, It's hard to be a glassy cat. No cat can be more than that. She's so transparent. Every act is as clear to us, and that's a fact. <laughs> Bungle says, Have you noticed my pink brains? You can see them work. So the donkey's like, 
Well, while your pink brains may be working, the owl can't see very well because it's like the daytime and owls are nocturnal. So he's like, yeah, like she just can't see well during the day. But her advice is still just as good. And Ojo is like, there's been no advice. That yeah. owl has given us no advice. She's just flapped her arms. Yeah, it's just been like and, statements. Like, yeah, made weird poems she's just been making us. observations. Yeah. yeah. Um, the donkey is like, oh, well, then what do you call those sweet poems she's offering you? Um, and Ojo's like, it's foolishness. That's that's all it is. It's foolishness. <laughs> yeah, it's nonsense. The donkey is like, she's the foolish owl. <laughs> okay. Donkey, the donkey's like, that's what we promised you. Like, that's, of course, I guess read that's the true. sign. Yeah. It said the foolish owl. But you're also talking about advice. Yeah. Bitch. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> oh, she didn't like the way that I delivered that. <laughs> she felt attacked. <laughs> um, but Scraps is like, okay, fine. That's the foolish owl. But you're the wise donkey, right? Like, wise donkey. So, like, that's what you are. And Ojo is like, yeah, so as the wise donkey, like, how can we get to the Emerald City? Can you give us just a little advice on that? And the donkey, I don't even want to go through it. But there's a series of questions and answers where he gives, like, little short answers. But he explains to them, hey, your current path, you need to keep going on that. Take it all the way to the Yellow Brick Road, which is going to come soon. And then you're going to be on the road to the Emerald City. So all they have to do is go the same way they've been going, and eventually they'll find the Yellow Brick Road. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great news. Okay. He's on down the road. He's on down, he's on down, he's on down the yellow brick road. Um, <laughs> and Ojo's like, thank you. Like, yes. finally, some actual information. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Scraps is like, is that it? Like, that's your wisdom? That's all you know? And the donkey's like. That's kind of what they've already been doing. Yeah. And the donkey's <laughs> like, we'll take no, it, I, guess. I actually know a lot of things, but they wouldn't interest you. Oh. Yeah, he's like, what I know is you should actually just be going on your way because yeah. the faster you lead, the faster you'll get to the Emerald City. Yeah. Which That's is those, good like, advice, annoying but... type of guys that are like, no, I actually can't explain uh, that to you because I don't think that your, like, brain will comprehend it. So Precisely. It's it's definitely that guy. Yeah. But mm. then the owl's like, no. off you go, fast or slow, where you're going, you don't know. Patches, bungle, munchkin lad, facing fortunes, good and bad, meeting dangers, grave and sad, sometimes worried, sometimes glad. <laughs> it's so long. Where you're going, <laughs> you don't know, nor do I, but off you go. I it, didn't realize how long that I'm was. I'm going to buy a gun. <laughs> <laughs> and hunt an and owl. And find L. Frank Baum. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they take that strange advice, and they do go. And that's the end of chapter eight, the foolish owl and the wise donkey. And Blake, what would you call that? Wise ass advice. <laughs> My damn <laughs> bye. <laughs> Chapter 9. They meet the woozy. So they walk for a while, and they realize that there aren't very many houses in the area at all. Um, and Scraps is like, well, we're not looking for houses. We're looking for a road of yellow brick. So she's <laughs> yeah. trying to keep everyone's spirits up, I guess. Yeah, like, we're not <laughs> expecting to see houses. We're expecting to see the brick road. So, like, that's fine. And... She also reflects that it's going to be funny to see a yellow brick road in this, like, entirely blue country. Uh, because, like, you know, won't that be crazy? Just doesn't match. Yeah. And the cat's like, there are worse colors than yellow in this country. And he, like, looks oh. at Scraps. Because <gasps> oh the cat's a bitch. So in this moment, Scraps reminds Bungle that she has pink brains and a red heart and green eyes. So maybe she's the fucking ugliest thing in this land. And Bungle yeah, no has to, to cope with that. Your organs. Yeah, exactly. No one wants to see your insides. Yeah. The patchwork girl just wears clothes. You yeah. Know? Yeah. 
Scrap, Thank God. Yeah. Scraps was like, jealous hater says what? And then Bungle's <laughs> like, what? <laughs> but Bungle actually just didn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> Her ears don't work like uh, that. But yeah. they're going back and forth like this. Who has the most beautiful complexion? Who looks better? And finally, Ojo, for the second time, is like, stop fighting. We are on like a really crappy mission right now. We need yeah. to keep morale up. They're stressing him out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Understandable. He's like, we need to be brave. And that means we need to be cheerful, even in this dark and scary, gloomy forest. Um, so after traveling for a bit, they come to a high fence that they can't get past. And it's like kind of gloomy in there. Like they can see through the slats that like it's a darker forest because it's like a board fence. It's like, it's like really like fully a wall. dense in there too. Yeah. But what interests Ojo most is a little, a little sign painted on the side of the fence. And it says... Beware the woozy. And as we know, mm. our drink tonight is hair of the woozy. Oh, and right. the woozy, and three hairs from it, is the first ingredient they were advised to obtain for the potion, or the compound, the magical compound. Elixir. Yes. And so Ojo's like, okay, well, there must be a woozy in there, and like that's what we need. But it also must be dangerous, because otherwise there wouldn't be a sign that said to beware. Yeah. And... Scraps is like, well, let's just not go in there. Let's take this path around the fence yeah. because if the woozy's dangerous, we don't need to be in there. Because the path is like on the fence almost, and then it just yeah. kind of go, whoop, whoop, and it goes, and it goes like around they it. can go around. Yeah, so there's Ojo, no problem. But Ojo's like, we absolutely have to go through. This is our first task. We yeah, have to get the woozy. Get that. They're like, we'll find a nicer one. And he's like, what if this is the yeah. only one? The Maybe sign says, find a the sign one. says, yeah. beware the woozy. It doesn't say beware of of woozy you yeah. know yeah. it's like it, it's it's insane that anyone wants to not go in there yeah go get it yeah and scraps is like okay well like then fine we'll go in here we can just ask the woozy for three hairs and like what could it hurt like what's like what what could happen bungles like it could hurt him and then he'll be mad at us asking to pluck his hair well then you just grab the hair and you run for your damn life i know well yeah scrap scrap you're is there like, for one damn they're reason being, they're being flutter yeah. budgets yeah they're being flutter budgets and <laughs> scraps is like but that's what scrap says she's like fucking bungle come in with us and like we're not scared and if you get scared you can hide up a tree you're gonna be fine like yeah. you'll be fine whatever she's like we're not fucking scared and ojo's like well i mean i'm a little scared <laughs> yeah. like, he's not but like things gotta he's get not, done yeah. not scared he's like you know what i want to save my unk nunky let's mm -hmm. go yeah. so he's like how are we gonna get over the fence and, and scraps, scraps is, is like halfway up that fence yeah she's like she's just climbing, climbing. Already going. <laughs> and you'll recall she has golden nails so she is just like <laughs> yeah she's disgusting <laughs> yeah yeah she's nails. scratching scrapping scratching um, better be but strong ojo starts climbing up behind her and he actually realizes it's much easier than yeah, he thought it was going that to bad. be okay good um, to a good start bungle just crawls between the bars because she's small and cute <laughs> she's little um, <laughs> well, baby and so there's not any path leading them to the forest. They just like wander into the forest in search of the woozy. And eventually they find a cave in the middle and they haven't, uh, it's important to note they haven't seen any animals at yeah. all so far. And there's like a little there's clearing nothing. around the cave. So it's like, it's obvious. Like this is like something. It's yeah. like a little burrow. And the weird thing, a weird thing about this cave is that, the hole on it is perfectly square. Which is, at this point, I will point out, seeing that square den for them is like, what the hell could that even be? It would be like science be? fiction. And L. Frank Baum says, it's scary enough to face a savage beast, but when you realize you don't know what the beast you're facing is going to be, it's so much scarier. Uh, and so, like, seeing this, like, l like little square, like, how big, like, what, four well, feet high? It says it's big enough to permit a goat. So it's probably, like, three by three, maybe. Okay. Three by three. Okay. So, like, the size of, like, a TV, pretty much. Perfect square. Yeah, perfect square, though. But in it, honestly, like, I didn't really think about this until I just said it a second ago. But, like, it is, like, science fiction. Like, if you went into the woods and saw a perfect cube cut into a cave, like, into a big rock. That's right. And it was, like, obviously deep. You'd be, like, Aliens. that's an alien. Yeah. yeah that's Animals alien. didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. nothing did that. Like, yeah. So, it's, it's kind of freaky. But um, Ojo's in no rush yes. to find out what's in there. Scraps is, like. 
maybe the woozy's sleeping in there. We could throw rocks inside to wake it. Yeah, and Audrey's like, no, 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 no it's fine. No, don't do <laughs> don't that. Don't do that. Yeah, make no. it. If it's asleep, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. Grab the three hairs and go. Yeah. yeah. Well, no one really needs to worry because the woozy is wide awake. <gasps> yeah. And it has heard their voices and it, emerge, it emerges from the cave. And in this moment, we are told that this is the only woozy in all of Oz. So this in is all the, of the only world. one. In all in the Oz world. and anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. So good thing they went here. Only woozy ever. Um, mm-hmm. The woozy is entirely squares and flat sides. So it's crazy. It's crazy <laughs> what this thing is. So it's crazy. Yeah, there's no um, round parts. Nothing is round. Yeah, it looks like it's made out of like toy blocks. Um, is that why everything's like that shape? Yeah, that's like that's why, why its, its den square? is square because it just started ramming its itself head. Into it. Yeah, so, okay. I was like, what, how did he form it to be so like that? So the shape that? of this thing, its head is a perfect cube. It has tiny holes for ears, but it's perfectly flat on the sides. Its face perfectly flat. Its eyes are square. Its nose is a flat square, and its mouth is like the bottom of a cardboard box flap flapping open. Ew. Like it's not like it, it it's just the bottom of the cube opening and closing. And then yeah, it's just got like this like rectangular cube body with these sawhorse cube legs Ew. and a sawhorse cube tail. Yeah. It's all just like long rectangle prisms and it's all flat and its skin is like an inch thick, hard, <laughs> smooth, dry It's just like a leather box. It's entirely hairless except for three three hairs. What? So you have to take his only hairs? (laughs) (laughs) And that's That's gonna come up. up. (laughs) (laughs) She said (gasps) three. (laughs) (laughs) That's fucked up. Uh, No wonder. (laughs) Wait, Um, so. Do, do they grow back? Because anyone else that wants to make this thing from just... We're not sure. The ingredients. We're not sure We're not yet. Sure. How do they know? So the woozy, like, he's mostly just this dark blue skin. And he doesn't look ferocious <sighs> at all. He's actually, like, kind of cute and friendly. Yeah, he's yeah. all squares. <laughs> or there and might be other woozies. The woozy just, like, kind of looks at them for a minute and then sits down, like, on his butt. Aww. And is just like, oh, aren't you a queer looking bunch of people yeah he's he's just happy to see them (laughs) yeah he's like i thought you were munchkins here to like mess with me and annoy me but you guys are pretty cool i'm pretty cool so like you're welcome in my domain (laughs) he's like i can tell he's like you guys look fucked. he's like you guys are fucking weird looking (laughs) and i'm a big (laughs) leather cube yeah Yeah. (laughs) but But, yeah he's like i'm pretty lonely out here (laughs) he's like it's nice here but it's really lonely yeah where are the rest of the woozies so he's the only one that's ever existed (gasps) apparently according to elfring bomb yeah which you might Um, not know yeah he doesn't know he got this via telegraph maybe he's not from there um, but Scraps asks the Woozy why he's locked up behind this fence, and the Woozy tells her that the Munchkin farmers cage- caged him up because he eats all of the honeybees, which the Munchkins farm for honey. He oh. all he eats is honeybees. That's he loves, his food. He chases them down. He goes <laughs> with his little mouth, and he <laughs> eats them. And because like his square. <laughs> his skin is so thick that the Munchkins couldn't kill him. They tried to kill oh him and destroy God. him, but they couldn't. So Somebody they just up? they took spears and they they like chased him back into this place and they built a fence around him and they trapped him up there. And yeah. he doesn't eat any more honeybees. So now? Ojo, there's no honeybees. Ojo in there. asks him. He's like, "What do you eat now?" And the woozy is like, "Nothing." For I have tried leaves. I've tried mosses. I've tried vines. Nothing tastes That's good to so me. I don't like up. anything. Uh, so since there aren't any honeybees, yeah, like Wyatt said, he hasn't eaten anything for years. I want to cry. Yeah. So and does Ojo. Yeah. But he's like, you must be starving. And Ojo knows what it's like to hunger. So yeah. he says, do you want some of my unlimited bread and cheese? And the woozy is like, what you is think I, I don't didn't know. fucking try that? Well, no, he <laughs> doesn't know what he's that like, is. I have no idea oh, what you're talking even about. Know. He yeah. was a wild animal. Yeah, all he had was bees and then nothing for years. Someone's got to get him some bees. Just yeah. like, come on. Well, so he tries the bread and cheese. And it's pretty fucking good. The woozy for him. loves it. He loves it. Yeah, he he's loves like it. he's for a while. We know where like, he needs to go then. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> um, 
and he finally eats his fill and he thanks Aww. Ojo and he's like, honestly, that's enough. Like, I am, I have not been this full. In yeah, ages. carbs. And also, yeah, you're just eating bread and you're cheese. You're basically so yeah. eating a grilled cheese every uh, day. <laughs> <laughs> but the woozy's like, is there any way I can repay you for your kindness? He has Aww. not experienced kindness like that. Because, okay, first of all, the farmers locked him up, but then he thought that they were farmers there to like mess with him. Do yeah, the farmers like, just come and mess with it's him? It's like they locked him up and now they torture him. Yeah. <gasps> so we got to get him out of there. He's just like yeah. so happy to meet them. And he's like, like what you did was so nice. Can I do anything for Justice you? For Justice, Justice for Woozy. Justice for Woozy. He asks if there's anything he can do for Ojo. And Ojo is like, actually you have it in your power to do me the biggest favor in the world. Yeah, and he's like, oh, if I can do it, yeah, of course. Like, yes, tell me what it is. If Ojo's, it's something I can do. Ojo's like, okay, um, I, uh, will, I want, um, I want three of your hairs. <laughs> and the woozy's like, damn, those are all my hairs, though. Oh, no, <laughs> he doesn't want to give it up. Yeah, uh, and it's literally yeah. when you were like, but he only has three, I was like, Hannah's woozy. <laughs> <laughs> But I o- do. I connect with Woozy. There's something about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Ojo is like, yeah. But like, the thing is, like, I want, I want them. I want yeah. those hairs. And he explains what what's going on. He's like, my yeah. uncle and also Margot Lot are fucking tur- turned to stone. Like, this will save them. And after like telling the whole backstory and kind of their adventure thus far, the Woozy's like, okay, yeah, like I'll help you. Like, absolutely. What like, there's no man. reason. Yeah. Yeah. And. So they're like, okay, cool. Like, we're gonna take them now. Like, can can I take them now? The so like, let me get the tweezers. Yeah. yeah. The woozy's like, go for it. Like, bad, sooner the better, I guess. Yeah. Um. So the Ojo gets behind the woozy. He takes hold of the three hairs, which are probably quite large because I'm picturing Ojo with like both fists around. I them. imagine them being like kind of long, but like um, really oof. thick, like like. Pencil lead thick. Ew. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's oily. giving like SpongeBob's eyelashes. Yes. Very. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know why that came to mind. <laughs> no, but. that's doink, it. Doink, doink. <laughs> Ojo is pulling. Now Ojo is tugging. Now Ojo is yanking. Now Ojo is using his full body it's weight. It's like, like over, his shoulder. over his shoulder. And he's running. Yeah, and he's what? running in place, digging a little hole in the ground. Oh my God. It's not coming out. It is they need scissors. not coming out. <laughs> yeah. The woozy just like looks behind him like, what's the trouble? Yeah. Um. And so Scraps is like, okay, like I'll join you. And the woozy's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to just hold on to this tree. Mm-hmm. You guys grab the hairs and pull them. And mm-hmm. so they do that and they're pulling and then they're tugging and then they're yanking. And then all of a sudden, they like slip and tumble to the ground the and they roll across slip the yard. out of their hands. Just take the woozy with you. Well, okay, that's actually a great point, but not what the cat says. No. <laughs> Bungle says, Give up. Yeah. She's like, <laughs> well, no, actually. <laughs> yeah. There's she... literally one reason we're here. <laughs> well, okay, yeah. So, <laughs> so the, the Bungle says, like, oh, the hairs, like, they must be like, latched on underneath like the roots are so strong it's thick hair or thick skin like just like they're not coming out of here like let's just fucking leave margot lot and the wizard as is it was like if we get every other ingredient for the elixir and we don't get this then there's no antidote like <laughs> we need these hairs and Bungle's <laughs> like, whatever. Like, maybe Unk Nunky and Margala aren't worth all the ado, you know? No. Um, it gets to be too much for Ojo. He goes over to a tree stump. He sits down. And he just, like, sobs. Aww. Yeah, he's just crying. And, and the woozy is like, hey, man, just, like, take me with you. There like, we go. The magician can just figure it out yeah, for himself. Yeah, he's probably got like, scissors there. Just take me. Yeah, that's okay. So that's what I, something I wondered is like, cut him. Just cut the hairs. Yeah. Cut him with a rock. Yeah. Cut him with your very, teeth. Oh, yeah, bite him even, off. Yeah, bite him off. But like, but it's maybe very, they need the root. Like the Wizard of Oz movie when Dorothy tells the scarecrow, like, well, you'd be no better off than you are now. Then yeah, just seriously. come with me. Well, yeah, the, we it's not like there's anything in there. They're not going to leave their unlimited bread and cheese for the woozy, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So he's going to just starve. Okay, but if he's they broke go somewhere else, if they broke off a piece of the bread and they broke off a piece of the cheese, could the woozy have an unlimited 
like a a portion like, of well, unlimited. Like, like I don't know. If you take a piece off of it, you probably can't take crumbs that replenish from it. I feel like that's just the piece. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if the woo- if they gave the woozy half the loaf and half the block of cheese, then the woozy could pull off of those. Forever. I don't think so. I think whichever side was fifty one percent. Yeah. From the ground. Mm -hmm. From the ground. Only ground. (laughs) So the woozy offers to go with them, and Ojo thinks this is an awesome idea. He jumps up to his feet. He's stoked. Um, They agree that the magician needs the hairs. It shouldn't matter if they're attached to the woozy's body or not. Yeah. So Ojo's like, let's go. Um, I have so many other things I need to find. Like, let's go. We're going. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And so he takes them toward the exit. Uh, and the cat, in a very mean way, is like, well, how are you even going to get the woozy out of the fence? And they're like, let's just decide when we get there. Yeah, we just need to walk over to it because we're yeah. already in a deep like, We're going to problem solve once we're over there. Yeah. So they get to where they're going. And it's basically the opposite side of where they climbed in. So like, they should come out like on the path still, is yeah. what they're hoping. Uh, and... <laughs> This is where we find out there's a few problems with their ability yeah. to escape. The Uh-oh. woozy sees the fence and he's like, "How'd you guys get in here?" And Ojo's <laughs> like, "We climbed." And the woozy's like, "Oh, yeah." No. He like lifts up no. his cube feet and he's like, "I'm not climbing anything with yeah, these. That's they're, not gonna happen. Uh-oh. They're perfectly flat, no claws." And yeah, how big is the wall? It's like ten feet at oh, least. Yeah, shit. it's like really no, it was tall. It <laughs> yeah. was it was like impenetrable when they yeah. met it on the other side. It was like twice the height of the patchwork girl. Yeah, and so they're they like make a slingshot. Well, yeah, because they're like, okay, maybe you can like dig, and he's like, smooth feet, can't dig, yeah, I like can't no dig. claws. There's Y'all nothing. Got a um, yeah, so scraps, seriously. Scraps is like, oh, they. He's also like, I can't gnaw at the fence either because I don't have any teeth. I just have like this open mouth. <laughs> Um, and no Scraps is like, <laughs> no one asked you to do yeah. that. <laughs> Scraps is like, there's a sign on this fence that says you're like a ferocious beast. There's nothing ferocious about you. And the woozy is like, oh, well, you haven't heard me growl before. My growl is actually the loudest thing. You can hear it for miles. Let's hear it. Uh, ch- children tremble with fear and strong men run and hide. Sure. <laughs> and Ojo's like, please don't growl yeah, then. I don't want <laughs> to. Like, we're actually, we don't really need that right now. <laughs> The wizard's like, oh, don't worry. I only let out my ear-splitting, soul-shuddering growl when I'm angry. Oh, and my eyes flash fire when I'm angry, too. Like real fire. Who is this man? I know. <laughs> who, yeah. who, who are we dealing with right now? Cute is that beast. the devil? Cute beast. <laughs> <laughs> so Ojo is like, okay, wait. So when you're angry, you flash fire from your eyes. So all we have to do is get you angry, and you can just light the fence on fire. Oh, and then we're going to be the, fine. The fence is wood. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And the woozy yeah. is like, That's wow, fine. I really wish I thought of that um, years ago. Yeah. He's like, why did I never <laughs> fucking I think been of that? He yeah, is like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. So he tells them, hey, if you want to get me angry, it's pretty easy. It's really easy, actually. <laughs> they going to tickle him? No. That would make more sense. That would make more sense. <laughs> All they have to do is say, Crizzle Crew. He hates it when people say Crizzle Crew. It makes him <laughs> o- terribly angry. Ojo's like, um, will that make you angry? <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, it makes me terribly angry. And Scraps yeah. is like, why? What does it mean? And the Woozy's like, I have no idea. That's why it makes me so angry. Honestly, yeah. I relate to that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I get it. But it's cr- it is cr- it's crazy. But... He says, okay, I'm going to face the fence now. And he, like, walks up and, like, puts his face in front of it. And Ojo calls out, Crizzle Crew. And then then Scrap says it. And then the cat says it. Crizzle Crew. Crizzle (laughs) Crew. Crizzle Crew. Crizzle Crew. Crizzle Crew. Crizzle Crew. 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 That is actually quite literally (laughs) what happens. Because then they all just start screaming it together. And I feel like it's like they're breaking a hex in a Disney movie. Oh, my God. The The camera is panning from face to face. Yeah, they're holding hands. Crizzle Crew. Crizzle Crew. And all the while, sparks are flying from its (laughs) eyes. Like, they're starting to kind of flash out. (laughs) And then this big fire just goes... The fence is alight. Yeah, it's burning. Smoke everywhere. Uh, and the woozy steps back and he's like, hey, 
Good idea, all you talking in unison like that, because that really got me oh, going. That pissed me he off. Like, yeah, he's like, I, I can move. hate you guys. I've never been that mad before. <laughs> never he's been like, that like, mad. Like, actually, before. get away from me. <laughs> actually, you're not taking any of my hairs. Yeah. <laughs> I actually realized my hairs have somewhere to be now. Yeah. Yeah. How dare you guys abuse <laughs> me like that. But thanks for your help. <laughs> um, but Ojo grabs some tree branches, and he, like, pats out the fire. Um, so there's not going to be a forest yeah. fire. Good C- job. I- Smokey the Bear <laughs> approved. <laughs> That's what I thought. I was like, thank God, because forest fire. But then he like looks at his friends and he's like, if the fence burns down, the munchkins are going to notice. Like, it, we just want this little hole here. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, just give us an exit. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. But also forest fire. Say the forest fire part. Yeah, like <laughs> definitely. definitely forest fire. So Ojo was like, you know, that reminds me, actually. You can't eat any bees while you're with us. Uh, you, we can't afford to have any more trouble because you've already like joined us on a serious mission. And what follows is an interesting interlude because the woozy promises not to eat bees and he's like, you can trust me because I'm square. And there's this whole joke about being square and I don't really love it. But the crooked magician's crooked, so you can't trust him. And then Scraps asks what shape she is. But since she's not square or crooked, she can't be trusted in general. And Scraps ends up just being confused. And they... So are we. Yeah, and so are we. (laughs) And at this point, for some reason, we're informed that (laughs) uh, Scraps' body loses its shape and crumples down while she's walking around and standing all day. Oh, she's trying to be something she's not. Well, so she has to roll on the ground until she, like, flattens out again. If only someone lifted her up like they did the Scarecrow. I know. Yeah, seriously. Well, but Ojo's not tall enough. And she's heavy because she's made of quilt. But that, unbelievably, is how we end chapter nine, entitled, They Meet the Woozy. And Blake, what would you call that? Because woozy, you're a firework. Come and show them what you're worth. Thank you for listening to Oz Hour. Please join us next time as we continue with Chapter 10, Shaggy Man to the Rescue. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Oz Hour Podcast for the latest on everything Oz. Oz Hour, created and hosted by Blake Stone and Wyatt Swingham. Co-hosted by Hannah Aguirre. Audio production by Charlie Johnson. Theme music written and performed by Rudy Clovis. Cover art by Valentin Lucas. <laughs>